fact, we'll talk about the third group of the photosynthetic protist. And that group is of euglenoids. Now, in euglenoids, the most common example that we take of is euglena. Euglenoids, they are found in fresh water. And they exhibit few plant-like and few animal-like characters. So there are few plant-like and few animal-like characters. Now what are these plant-like or animal-like characters? They exhibit photosynthesis. They perform photosynthesis also. And if an organism performs photosynthesis, it has to have the pigment that is chlorophyll. So they have chlorophyll and this chlorophyll is present in chloroplast. So presence of chloroplast with pigments is characteristic feature of plant. So this was the plant-like character which they exhibit. And animal-like character means absence of cell wall. So cell wall is a characteristic feature of plants. Absence of cell wall is a characteristic feature of animals. So there are certain plant-like characters and certain animal-like characters. And that's why we call them, these euglenoids, as connecting link between plant or plants and animals. Normally they have two flagella but they can be with single flagellum also. So one or two flagella. Now how are these flagella and what is the function? We'll draw a simple diagram to understand it. The anterior end has a gullet. Gullet is a structure which has a mouth and a passage through which the food is going to enter. So this tube-like structure is the gullet and this is the elongated body. The nucleus is prominent. The flagella are present on the inner anterior side. Now anterior side means where the mouth is that is called the anterior side. So this passage is known as the gullet and this is the opening. Now on the anterior side let us draw two flagella. The one flagellum is very long and which helps the organism to swim. So they are basically flagellates and with flagella they are able to swim. The second flagellum is small and it remains inside that tubular gullet. The function of the long flagellum is locomotion. So this flagellum it helps in locomotion. It helps the organism to swim. And the smaller flagellum, it, when it moves, it basically creates a whirlpool. If this flagellum rotates, there would be a whirlpool created and the food particles would come in the center of that cone-like water, which we call the whirlpool. And those particles are going to act as the food. So the smaller flagellum helps in capturing of food. That means when sunlight is available, they perform photosynthesis. But if sunlight is not available, then they engulf particles. That means they become holozoic. Again, photosynthesis is plant-like character and holozoic mode of nutrition is animal-like character. As we said that chloroplasts are present, these chloroplasts are a little elongated and they are radiating. That means the chloroplasts, they are arranged like this. They are arranged in this radiating manner. So these structures are chloroplasts and chloroplasts have chlorophyll A, chlorophyll B and xanthophyll. These are the main pigments which are present. 
Now in the cytoplasm, it is a typical eukaryotic cell, so all other organelles are there, but we are not drawing all other organelles. In the cytoplasm are present some storage particles and these storage particles are of a substance which is called paramylum. Paramylum is a carbohydrate, polysaccharide, but it is different from starch as well as glycogen. It is different from starch and glycogen both. That means in case of plants, the polysaccharide or the carbohydrate which is stored is starch. In animals, it is stored in the form of glycogen. So, euglenoids have another third type of polysaccharide or carbohydrate which is called Paramylum. So, paramylum would be scattered everywhere. Near the base of the flagellum or at the base of this gullet, we find a red colored structure which is called the eye spot. Eye spot is red and it helps in perceiving light. Because it is a photosynthetic organism, these, this eye spot, which is a pigment spot basically, it is going to detect light and the organism will be able to swim towards that source of light so that it can perform photosynthesis. And this eye spot is red due to a red pigment. The name of the pigment is astaxanthin. Important pigment because whenever we talk about red, there are many red pigments. So, this astaxanthin is the red pigment which is found in the eye spot. Now, as we have understood from the structure, there are certain properties which are like plants and certain characteristics which are like animals. We have written here that they do not have cell wall. So, this outermost layer. What exactly is this? This outermost layer is known as pellicle. And this pellicle is highly flexible membrane. And it is made up of only proteins. So it is not a typical biomembrane which is made up of proteins and phospholipids. This is a unique character. In case of plants or animal cells, Though uh, even if cell wall is present or absent, the plasma membrane is going to be the same type that is proteins and phospholipid. Here, the outermost layer is made out of only proteins and it is highly flexible. So by understanding this, we have reached to a conclusion that there are certain characters which are plant-like and certain characters like animals. So keeping these things in mind, originally, when these organisms were classified, botanists kept them into a different group and zoologists, they kept them into a different group. So according to botanists, they were placed in division Euglenophyta. Phyta word normally we use when we are talking about plants. And Zoologists place them in protozoa and class was Mastigophora or this was this was the phylum and this was uh, the class. Now it can neither be placed in uh, plant kingdom directly or nor it can be in animal kingdom because it is showing both the characters. So a common term was given to this and they were called mastigophyto, uh, sorry mastigophora or they were euglenophyta together. Both the names were given to them. So when we, were, we, we, when we talk about euglenoids, we just call them that they are either euglenophyta or phytomastigophora. So when we combine these two things, that means the, this one and these two, 
So a common term which emerges is phyto from here. So phyto mastigophora. So we can find all these three terms given. If it is only euglenophyta, that means we are talking about it from the perspective of botanists. When we talk, talk of only mastigophora, we read about mastigophora, that means we are talking from the other perspective. And the scientists, when they reach to a conclusion that it can neither be placed in pure plants nor in pure animals, then a third term was given for it that included a little word from plant and from animal. So it is now known as phytomastigophora by combining these two terms. Reproduction is by longitudinal binary fission. Longitudinal binary fission. Now during this reproduction, flagella would be lost. So first, the flag, both the flagella would be lost. From the anterior side, splitting would start. That means it's going to split vertically. So in longitudinal binary fission, first the flagella would be lost. And what would be visible to us is one euglena like this. Then we would find two gullets form and the body is the remaining part is still one and this depression is going to get deeper and deeper and finally we would have two daughter euglena which would develop their flagella. So by longitudinal binary fission the reproduction takes place that means reproduction is asexual very very rarely only in one species sexual reproduction has been reported. Under adverse conditions, euglenoids undergo cyst formation. So cyst formation is only during adverse condition. In adverse conditions. And what happens during cyst formation is these flagella would be lost this organism is going to become more or less circular and it gets surrounded by a cyst, a thick leg. So if this circular structure, because we have drawn pellicle with blue, we are showing it same. It gets surrounded by a cyst, a thick walled layer around it. Now the cyst is also red in color. It is bright red in color and the red color of the cyst, this is red color and this is due to another pigment. Here the pigment was astaxanthin. Here the pigment is hematochrome. So there are two red pigments, one which is found in this eye spot and the other which is in the red cyst and this red cyst is formed only during adverse conditions. Sometimes there is one more stage which is being reported. Again, it is during adverse condition. So that stage is known as Pamela stage. What happens in Pamela stage is many euglenoids, they come closer and get surrounded by mucilage. So say these are the euglenoids, they have lost their flagella, they have become circular and they get surrounded by a thick mucilage layer. And once the adverse condition is gone, they will again develop both the flagella and would start appearing like the elongated cell, a typical uh, cell. One more important thing which we have to remember when we talk about reproduction. Normally, when we talk of reproduction by mitosis, then we say that the nuclear membrane or nuclear envelope, it dissociates. In case of euglena, the nuclear membrane remains intact. So in this, nuclear membrane remains intact during 
the division. So there is no dissociation of nuclear membrane. The nucleus is going to split into two and whatever chromosome separation takes place is going to happen inside the nucleus. So this is how we talk about or we try to understand about an organism which has some characters like plants and some characters like animals. Earlier when the classifications were given, this organism could not find its place because it could not be placed in either of these two uh, groups, kingdoms, that is Plantae and Animalia. But once this protista was formed, the unicellular organism was placed in this because one category is photosynthetic protist. So protist is unicellular eukaryotic organism, the ones which perform photosynthesis. That's where this euglena was placed in this group. So there are three photosynthetic protists. One was chrysophyta, example was diatom. Then was pyrophyta, example was dinoflagellate. And the third is, we can call euglenophyta or phytomastigophora, where the example is euglena. So we are done with one group of protista. So in the next video, we'll start with another group of